Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hardcore Heroes. How are you guys doing this fine, fine morning? Afternoon? Day? Evening. Uh, it's... Oh, no, it's afternoon here now, yeah. Um, oh, okay. I'm doing pretty you good. Go, right. Yeah, I, um... The, the one interesting thing that happened in my life was I went to PAX. It was... It was all right. Like, I've been to PAX for the past few years. It was it a was little... only all right? Yeah, it was disappointing compared to previous years, but it's PAX, so it's always still fun. Mm. Uh, what else? I gave Dragon Age Inquisition another shot. It's mm. not a good game, but it is better than I remember. It's like, not a good game. Okay. It's like an MMO, and I don't like that. Like, you... The mechanics are very MMO-like. Uh, there's enemies, like, there's random mobs that are around the world and they respawn after you kill them. It, I don't like that, but it, it does do some cool things. The characters are really good. They give you some opportunities to define who your character is, which not many RPGs do, and I actually like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's got some cool stuff going for it, but the actual mechanics and gameplay are generally really, really bad. Oh my god. You know, earlier yesterday, I was having a discussion with people regarding um the uh, the dragon age series and everyone seemed to think that the only good one was origins yeah is that really the case uh dr okay origins is not amazing but it's pre it's pretty good um dragon age 2 is a horrible game gameplay wise but it's actually pretty good story wise i liked it at least like it it does cool things and then same thing with inquisition it's really boring repetitive kind of shit but the characters and the writing are actually pretty they're decent they're all right i like it cool how the was packs? Oh. Oh, um, Pax. what did i do at pax there wasn't anything interesting like there was dawn of war 3 that was that was all right that was pretty good yeah was that good uh yeah i, I was kind of hoping to be more like dawn of war 2 but i guess that was kind of a uh, a vain hope I was. It's more like the I was, first. I was fucking pro at Dawn of War one, like top one hundred pro. All right. All right. It, it was more like an RTS. I kind of liked the squad tactics approach of uh, two, though. How it was you know, really in depth cover system, and it's all about like putting your guys up into good positions and beating the other people in just a straight shootout. I like that. But three looks pretty good too, uh, and that might have been the only really no. Oh, I played No Man's Sky for three minutes. How was, was that? That was enough No Man's Sky for a lifetime. Really? Oh my god. As somebody who played Elite Dangerous for like 50 to 100 hours, like I, I can play boring games like that. I played No Man's Sky for three minutes. That was all I could take. You know, I hadn't really heard anything about it until it launched, but then looking into it, I was getting pretty excited for it and was hoping that all the uh, complaining about it was unfounded. It, um... Wasn't? No. It's... I like I saw it coming because I played Elite Dangerous and it was the same thing where it's like we have four billion planets, but they're all kind of, you know. Um, our cams are all, all broken. Oh no! Our cams are fucked up. Yep. Wait, did I go off? No, no, our cams are just ruined. Um. All right, Nick, you your cam's broken somehow. So. Should we restart? Wait, I don't, um, no, doing? we're already in it. I don't, I don't know how we're going to do this. It's awkward. It is awkward. It is uh, awkward. Yeah. Super awkward. Well, let's just keep talking. I'll talk. Nick, uh, Nick, yeah, invisible yeah, Nick. There, there's really nothing else to talk about. Max, Max was okay. Nothing that exciting. I'm good. So, what have I done right? So I went, I left for Gamescom like a few hours after the end of the last session. Gamescom was great. Uh, I had a good time there. Basically just spent a lot of time drinking in Germany with my friends, which was awesome. And then we played some games at the same time. <laughs> and then um, in between sort of then and now, pretty much nothing happened. But then today, I've just been like walking around in the hills for like all day. And I was just thinking, waiting for some giant spiders to come out of a hole and kill me. <laughs> Wait a minute, I was didn't thinking, you... Like, you were telling us earlier about something you heard on the news. Ah, well, yes. Yeah. So anyone British amongst us will have heard of a company called Sports Direct, which sell like shit, but they like really cheap sportswear, whatever. They're in the news because um, they've been like mistreating staff or whatever. Wait, wait, so wait before you finish this story, hold on. Um, 
Sean and Nick, can you both kill your cams? I think I figured out how to fix this. All right. <laughs> Who's going on first now? Um, Sean is. No, Nick is. All right. Fixed? Does that work? Almost. Oh, wait. Almost. Nick, cycle your cam. Fuck, this is this. Uh, it's all ruined. All of our surprises are ruined. Bastion, turn it on, and then Sean and Nick cycle again. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. All the spoilers ruined. Uh, Sean, and, Sean and Nick cycle. He's coming on fast. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. All right. Nick, turn it now. Oh, God. All right. Okay. It's all. I think it's time to have a conversation with everyone here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so let's get um what the fuck is happening here? Uh Sean cycle your cam and then Nick cycle your cam. Everyone else leave your cams as they are and we'll get everyone in the right positions. My cam is cycled. Alright. Nick cycle. Oh uh, shit. Uh Sean cycle again. I'm sorry, I got that mess mixed up. <laughs> Coolio, all right. Awesome, everyone's in the right place. No one saw anything. No one knows anything. The illusion is still complete, even with the earlier mess up on the overlays because they didn't behave like they were supposed to. Shh, you are all still ignorant of things that are coming in this episode. No one has seen anything. Yeah. Anyway, Nick, you were talking about this thing you saw in the news about another European company mistreating their workers. Another? Well, anyway, yeah. So Sports Direct mistreating their workers. Like, they, people were having to, like, uh, piss in bottles and stuff because they weren't allowed to go to the toilet. All oh, sorts my of God. Like but anyway, so it's in the news. And uh, the company's held its annual general meeting and the news is reporting on it. So I'm just casually listening to the news. And the news reporter says, here we are at Sports Direct headquarters in Shirebrook for their annual general meeting. I was like spit my fucking coffee all over the place. It's like, are you being serious? So I Googled it. It's a real fucking place in England. Where is it? Not, not even that far away. Mansfield. Which, you know, just kind of in the center in of England. England? Yeah, I don't even really know. All right. I have Googled it. It is a real place. Yeah. Population 13,000. Yeah, it's like it's, it's really not that far away from me. It's just on the other side of the Peak District, which is where I was today. I'd have just walked for another, you know, two days. I'd probably got there. So there you go. Cool. Uh, what else? Gamescom? We do Someone Gamescom? Yeah, I went to Gamescom. I'm kind of new to, like, big festival things like that. So we kind of just... I feel like probably should have spent more time at the indie games, but we kind of just walked around and took in the sights. Um, played For Honor. That was pretty sweet. I played Drop Zone and got some pizza keys for that, but to be honest, I don't know if it's actually that good. Hmm. I gave you a beer key, Neil. Maybe it would be more fun if we played together. Like, I played a few games against... The problem with it is uh, you unlock... You unlock, like, new heroes and new parts for your, like, bots as you, like, level up and spend currency. So it's not like StarCraft where you start on a level playing field. Like, if somebody's just got better shit than you because he's played more, then it's kind of hard to be him. So I won like my first five games where I was playing against people who were beginners like me. We just had the starting shit. Mm -hmm. Playing against someone with like much better stuff than me. He just absolutely destroyed me. There was nothing I could do. And I just thought, well, as soon as they bring real money into this, it's just going to be ruined. The win is no good. Yeah, so. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that about wraps up all of those things. Uh, so where did we leave off? Does anyone remember? Uh, yeah. How, how close are you to leveling up, Sean? I've just watched the episode the other day, so... I think I'm like 10 to 15,000 off. I mean, we're talking like, what, 200 experience, 100 experience? It's not... Yeah. I, how about you do it, Nick? Because you probably remember it better than I do. I'm only 13,000 off, so I'm there actually probably closer. All right. So Wait, last what? episode. No way. Yep. 13,000. It's only 60k yeah. for level 7. Wait. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yes. No. Yes. Yes, no. No, you yes, don't catch up until level 8. Nope, 60k oh. for level 7. Really? John's yes. gonna have an existential crisis. <laughs> no, I, did, I thought it was level 8 where he passed me. Oh shit, okay. Well, so we started off um, in Stromheim with Darth, and Darth suggested that since we're so close to Copper Hill, where Joris lives, 
that maybe we should go and um, give him back his spell book. We reluctantly agree. Head off on the road. Only to be attacked on the road by, surprise, surprise, giant spiders. So these ones, particularly giant spiders, though, like the giant, the biggest, the biggest hype. Two of them, one of them fucking grabs Van. So it's like dragging him down into his little hole. I killed the other one, chased the other one down. We killed it. And there's like a massive egg sack in there, which I just fireballed because I don't have any of that shit. So we exterminated the spider population. Mm -hmm. Continued on to Copper Hill to meet Joris. He told us, spun us a yarn about how he's a great adventurer, but lives an extravagant lifestyle. He's running low on gold to maintain his extravagant lifestyle. But he knows where there's some, uh, some good loot to be had, some good wealth to be found. And he's known about it for a while. And maybe if we go and do the dirty work, he'll, uh, he'll tell us where it is and we'll split it 50-50. He's a little bit more information than that. So uh, he told us it was an old temple from before the world split. There's loads of loot down there, but uh, a couple of clay golems guarding it. In fact, at one point there was four, but some of his friends had been down there and killed a couple of them and even left the magical staff down there. Van was unsure, um, but I, I, I convinced him. I said, look, I can probably just kill these things on my own. So we'll just go down there, I'll kill them, and then we'll, we'll get the loot. So he begrudgingly agreed, like, okay, if, I, if you kill them all, that's fine. But before we went, we got a bit more information from Joris, and he said, look, the deal is, um, you can have the stuff. I get first pick of everything else, and then we split everything to make sure it's fair. So I agreed. We go down there with Darth, hired a coach from Copper Hill to take us, go into a ruined mine shaft, and... Um, you know, I cast fly on myself and I start flying into the temple grounds where the golems are. And then what ensued after that was a fireball, another fireball, some magic missiles, some running away, some dodging rocks. Eventually the golems died. We looted the temple to find thousands and thousands of gold, but also a scroll of resurrection. Now, I don't need to tell everyone how important that is. So we thought, well, we don't want our Joris getting his hands on this, so we'll squirrel this away. Fine, you go and take that back to Cop Hill. I'll go and take the chest of Joris. We'll split the loot. We'll make off with the scroll. Everyone's happy. Go back to Joris. But it turns out he knew about the scroll all along. So this leaves us in a bit of an awkward position. And I think that's kind of what we're... I think yeah. that is spot on where we left off. Yeah, we had gone to the next day. Malachi stayed at Joris's. Um, yeah. Van stayed at an inn in town. We've woken up. It's been like 10 minutes since we woke up. Van was having a panic attack. So we called the last session on a cliffhanger. And now we're picking up right where we left off. Yes. Cool. So, uh, Van, you have the scroll. You're taking it with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, after after the panic attack, Van had a moment, just like a sudden second where seemingly three weeks had passed, and he had plenty of time to calm down. <laughs> uh, and first thing he's going to do is going to memorize the spells. So I'll go ahead and get that sorted. But after he memorizes spells, he's going to walk to the uh, whatever temple is closest, like a nice one in town. Okay. Uh, and when I get there, I'm going to try and commune with Jesus. All right. Uh, you make your way into the temple. I guess we're in town. We should put town over. Um, you make your way into town. Make your way to one of the temples. Uh, not a particularly big place. Copper Hill is a smaller place in this world. Uh, and find your way to one of these statue or the statue of Jesus. Yeah. So I'm going to pray. And Van is thinking. He knows about the scroll. This guy's dangerous. I don't really feel good trying to cheat him. So instead, I'm thinking about just putting the scroll in with the loot and letting him take the scroll. But I want to commune with Cheese to see if there's any objections to that, that course of action. Because this is like ancient forgotten magics. So we'll see if uh, she has any sort of complaints about me doing that. But my plan is to let Joris take this role. Interesting. All right, so how... What is your ritual for communing with your goddess? Um, I, I think it's because it's the temples are dedicated to all the gods, right? So you probably don't make some big show. You probably light some incense around the statue. You probably get some candles and light them all. And um, I think from there, you just kind of kneel down in front of the statue and pray. It's kind of like a quiet 
internal experience. It's it's a spiritual state. Okay. And what is it like, specifically sorry. that you're praying for? Is it guidance? Um, guidance, answers? yeah. I, I want to... I, I have an idea of what to do, and I want to know if that's if that's fine. If I should proceed or if I should not. Because right, they it, normally I would just kind of make my best judgment, but with something this big, I figure I should probably get my god in on the business. Um, the guidance you receive. Is, uh, part of the beauty of life when things go smoothly smooth things are honored deals or honored deals are smooth things okay uh, it is more elegant to do as you promise than to break your word all right then from there i'm gonna grab the scroll or i guess it's already my backpack i'm just gonna get up blow out all the candles and uh, start heading over to Joris's. Let me iron out the last spell that I want to put in here because I want to go and give you my spell list just in case things go bad, but I highly doubt what's going to happen at this point. Um, so then you're just going to head over to Joris's? Yeah. Right, we'll just skip to that scene then. Okay, I'll put my spells. So I spend the morning learning spells, right? Yeah. There you go. Alright, so you spent the morning learning new spells. Mm -hmm. You were out in the woods the at Joris's place. Yeah. As indicated on the map uh, right here. I have nestled between some hills. Like oh, wait. Had. I think uh, we forgot to mention that Darth had gone with Van and they were picking up um, an Oh, upgrade. yeah. So um, I'm going to... Actually, yeah, I'll meet up with Darth in town and I'll say, we can bring the appraiser if you want, but I'm not sure it's going to be necessary. So uh, I'll go and level with you entirely. In the, uh, in the temple, there was a scroll of resurrection. What? Yeah. It's lost magics, ancient magics that have been lost to the world for centuries, maybe even a millennia. Wait, does that does that do what I that does what I think it does, right? That that brings Anybody someone back, back from the, the dead. dead? They can they could have been dead for hundreds of years and you can bring them back. Can I have it? I mean no. I Joris wants it. I snuck it into town because I didn't know what to do with it and I communed. Well with let's the chief. go. Yeah, let's I communed. Go to the appraiser. Chief. Let's get the hell out of here. Come on. Yeah. I I just want to make sure you understand what I'm going for. I'm gonna offer him the scroll, but we take the rest of the loot in exchange. The scroll is worth more than everything else in there combined. By far. I know he wants it. Well, I have a feeling I know what he's going to do with it. So, yeah, let's go. Let's go. All right. Uh, and let me go ahead and post my spells in the chat. Yeah. And then, yeah, I guess we did, we head off to Joris's. All right. The two of you head back and meet up at Joris's with Malachi. Malachi, what have you been doing there? Just hanging out? Yeah, I guess I've just been making small talk with uh, Joris. Does a uh, sort of interest? Do I get any chance to speak to his wife? Yes, if you wish, you can find a, a moment to speak with her. Alone. Yeah. Okay, this is too good of an idea not to tell chat, right? I have this planned. I'm not going to do, but you suggestion on his wife to get her to kill Joris in his sleep. Isn't that fucking evil? That is very evil. Someone's dying like that at some point. <laughs> so I, I talk to her and I think now would be the perfect time, but I don't do it. So I just uh, I just hang out, I have a cup of tea with Joris's wife, and yeah. Before we go her. in, uh, you don't kill her. No. Oh, I you ask. Don't have her kill him. When me and Joris are learning spells, I ask him what he's learning. I say, so Joris, uh, what's that you're learning over there? None of your business. You know, just spells. Yeah, no need to be like that, is the we were friends. Before uh, before Van walks in, he's gonna stop outside and cast protection from fire on himself. <laughs> just as a precaution. If, uh, if what about asks, if Darf asks, he'll just say a quick blessing. Sometimes I pray to the gods. Oh, I am okay. a cleric after all. That seems that seems reasonable. And then yeah, I'll walk in. 
Okay. Wait, oh shit, I still have that flail on me, don't I? Magic Man, flail? No, the normal flail that I took to kill that golem. Man just kind of like noses it on his belt and goes, ah, so uncivilized, and he tosses it off to the ground next to him. He's got a scimitar in his backpack, it's fine. Nice. I'll just pull it out and belt it. All right. So the two of you plus Darf are in with uh, Joris. He sees you guys coming, goes, ah, good. Hey, where's that appraiser? I thought we were gonna divvy out the loot here. I don't think that's gonna be necessary. And then it's gonna pull Another the Another disappointment. And it's gonna pull the case out from the uh the bag. Just kinda put it on the table. Say, you lied to us. Uh, I lied to you? You knew this was there. You didn't mention. Is that what I think it is? It is. It slides it across the table to him. A live mission is very different than theft. theft. If any one of us here was being dishonest, it was the two of you. Darf, I hope you didn't know about this. And Darf goes, no, no, I, he just told me maybe an hour ago before we left town. I saw it in the temple and I put it in my backpack. Took it back to the temple in town because I needed to know what to do. Well, the right thing to do would be to honor the deal that we had made. And that's what I intend to do. Here's the deal, Jors. We'll give you the scroll. And we walk away with the rest of the loot. We did say we'd split everything evenly, and I think we both That's know that this is more, more than, than everything, everything else. else. Far more than everything else. And if you don't like the deal, you can take the rest of the loot, and we'll take the scroll. Well, it seems like the two of you found some balls. I think I'm being more than fair. I think everybody has friends they'd like to bring back, Joris. I hope you know that I don't do this. I don't offer you this kind of power easily. I'm not standing next to Van. Mm -hmm. All right. Deal that we had made is that I get first pick and we divide everything evenly. Mm -hmm. The scroll is worth more than everything else. Well, the deal we made is I get first pick and then everything and else then is divided. And then you get pick, and then I get pick, and we just kind of go back and forth, and we... And make sure that everybody winds up with something even. Right? That was the deal. I don't see how you splitting the treasure after getting a scroll of resurrection is anywhere near even. Especially in this law of the world for centuries. You think that this is the kind of thing that we're going to split treasure with on top of? We can take the scroll, and you can get everything. Or we can take the rest of the treasure, and you can take the scroll. That's more than generous. Well, what I had told you earlier about money running short wasn't a lie. So why don't we say uh, I take the scroll and maybe five of those bloodstones over there and call it even. Well, how about Joris? Then I'll I'll pay you to take a look at some of your spells. You can make some copies for me of the spells that I choose, and you can leave here with some gold as well. That seems fair. You get some of the you get some of the treasure. Malachi gets access to some of your spells. You get the scroll. You identify that scimitar and the staff. Everyone makes out good. We hang out here. Identify the scimitar and the staff. I get the scroll. You get I my will, spells get and how much? Uh, well, what did you say? You, what did you say sounds? you were to charge? Was it fifty gold per spell? Hundred per spell. How, how much do we think is in here? So we needed the appraiser after all. Um, let's see. Let's do some quick math here. I don't want to spend too much time. This someone can run back and get an appraiser if need be. Sure. Actually, Van will probably just ask Darf to go grab one. Yeah, maybe we. Sounds like we're gonna spend a, you know another day here, yeah. just on all this out. So. All right. So Darf goes back to town, brings back an appraiser takes a look at everything. Um, he's gonna charge like 5% to appraise everything for you. Come on. That's just, that's how it goes. That's how he makes his money. Um, the total value of the art objects, the gems, the gold, and the silver everything. comes out to be 6,250 and he takes his 5%. 
Strange. Can we liquefy all that in town? Um, More or less? Uh, uh, no, not really. Because the art objects are the sorts of things like you could sell them in town, but you could sell them in town for like half or three quarter price because that, that person will then sell it for full price to make money. Um, art objects you could carry around and trade to someone for full yeah. value. Okay, so we could have them as trade yeah. items. So there's that, 5, I, was going to do, I wanted to get gems of roughly the same value. So we're down to like 5,937 um, total value here. For everything? Uh, not including uh, the scrolls or the potions. Okay. okay. 5,937? Yeah, 0. 0.5. So I asked Joris how much money, how much gold do you need? Yeah, you know, why don't I take this here uh, golden candelabra, he says, pulling up something that the appraiser had valued at uh, 1,200 GP. And the scroll, and you guys take the potions and the rest of everything else. And you make Excuse copies me. of, what, 10 spells? Well, then you just can hire me to make copies of spells as you please. For free? No, of course not. Well, then you don't get the is partially for the gold. spells. Yes. The identification and the spells are part of why you're getting gold out of this. We had a deal that you were... I was going to identify these things, the staff and the, the scimitar. That That is part of our deal already. Right. Right. That's done for free. But learning spells get... on top of that is you pay for. Yeah, but we, we get all the loot and you get the scroll. But I'm giving you... You can take the candelabra and... Yeah, the 1,200 for the spells. I'm not trying to screw you here, Joris, but, you know. kind of are. Fair. You kind of are. What do you, the two of you need all this wealth for, huh? You're probably just going to go get, get yourself killed and give it to some goblins or something or a spider. What are you going to use it for? I got a family to feed. Uh. And resurrecting people is not cheap stuff. Even with the scroll, it's not easy. Oh, I know. You take the candelabra. And make and um, let me look through your books, and I'll pick six spells. You identify the stuff, and we'll call it even. Done. Okay. You want anything beyond those six, though? That's fair. GP a spell. That's fair. All right. All right. So let's let's do, do that. Drop. So it's five thousand nine hundred and thirty-seven. Um. Yeah. We kind of need gonna, to know the break. We're gonna do it a little now. bit differently. Uh, we're not just gonna do straight cash value. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I'm just trying to remember how much it is worth so that we can uh, keep that in mind. Actually, if you can give us the value of certain things, that'd be useful. I will, so, yeah. For trade. Yeah, if you got a list, that'd be sweet. I and do have I, a list. Do you have this guy's complete spell list? Mm, uh, I will give you a list of his spells as needed. Because yeah. um, I want to pick six. Right. So have... the, 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 the appraiser took... 330, we'll just call it. This mm -hmm. brings us to 1670. Oh. Okay. So, um, Joris is going to take the candelabra, yeah. which leaves you guys with 20 bloodstones. How much are they worth each? 50 GP each. 50. One of you put that on your character sheet. Yeah, I'll just I'll make a list and then we can divvy it up later. I'll just get the list for now. Uh, there are two potions: one of plant control, one of vampire control. Okay. There is four hundred silver, sixteen seventy gold, uh, and okay. three. Uh, I'm sorry, four art objects: one worth ten, one worth ninety. One worth 110 and one worth 1800. Okay. So it was 10, 90, 110, 1800? Correct. Okay. Uh, I guess Malachi and I will on the spot split the coins and I guess the bloodstones, and then we'll probably just have the art objects and things like that. And we'll keep that in his house or something when we get back to Shirebrook. Yeah. So why have you so given me just 800? 10, and 10 bloodstones. Eight. Okay, you're getting 10 bloodstones, 200 silver, uh, and then I have to do math here, 835 gold. 10 bloodstones, which is 15 GP each, and then what, 835 gold. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of gold. Yeah. And 
200 silver. Yeah, 200 silver and 10 bloodstones, which I think we already put down. Sweet. Yeah, all right. And you, you're keeping the potions for now, yeah? Um, yeah, I, th I think those are going to be things that we probably don't carry around with us at all times. You'll probably keep those like in a lockbox in your house or something. And you've got the art objects as well. Yeah, I think I I'm splitting the stuff that we'd likely carry around with us and then some of it will just keep in your place because I don't think we're going to carry art objects around. With us. Just start, you know, Neil, uh, we're getting a lot of gold here, so I'm not going to be too picky about it, but the, the guy took 5% of the total value, but he doesn't need to uh, appraise gold and silver. Yeah, yeah. Normally it's a 10% um, of things, but it's like okay. one big chest with all sorts of crap in it. The coins are old and maybe not pure gold or maybe not the right size. You know, like it, it's, it's yeah, old yeah, yeah. stuff. Um, so That's rather cool. than doing his whole 10% since it's a big, big lump, he said 5% and then he'll make sure all, like this gold coin is actually the same value as the existing gold coins, which they aren't really. And he's like, all right, these coins are a little bit bigger, a little bit denser. They're probably p more pure, but larger. So you can say this coin is worth this much gold. Mm -hmm. a, it's a complicated process. Yeah, I see you're reading chat it. and reading Sean's remarks. Hey, I haven't read anything. Uh huh. I haven't. I haven't been on not not that Sean, other Sean. Sean hey, I don't Sean. even have shots open. Oh, okay. That's a lie. I had. Uh, I, I don't I even know. That's a filthy lie. I see that smile on your face. <laughs> the I mean, I, I'm not even. Lying. I read chat, never, but I just never trust a red coat. I, I like reading the reactions. I'm gonna lie. It's that kind of paranoia that started the war in the first place. You could trust us all along. Yeah. All right. So uh, should we? Skip ahead a few days. He makes the yeah. He's doing spells. the. Yeah, Malachi is going to go digging through his spell book, and then he's going to identify the items for us. Right. Okay. So he identifies your scimitar, scimitar and your staff. Where are my notes yeah. on this thing? I'm so excited to find out about both of these. Yeah. And I just, I can just cast, cast continual light on the new stuff, and then it's. Does the same thing as the old one. Yeah. Or you could just like attach something with continual light, cast it to it on the staff. No, oh, that'd be even better, wouldn't it? Have yeah, you just, like, like, yeah, you can get like a rock, cast continual light on it, and then just like tie it to the staff. Mm, yeah. I could get someone to install like a little socket for the rock so I could keep it in my pocket and then just. Was the scimitar fat? No, you've been carrying this scimitar for a while, right? Yeah, ever since. Uh... So yeah, it was. Her um yeah we, we've had it for a while yeah. it was like Karak's right hand woman uh, scimitar i think oh this is the the really light scimitar yeah the mithril one right okay cool it's been a while since we played and my notes are incomplete as usual um so your staff which he i uh, should actually make sure he can id it fail no, he doesn't fail. Um, where did I put that damn staff? Hmm. All right, staff, 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 staff. Here we go. Um, it appears to be a normal bronze wood staff banded with iron. The shaft is actually as strong as steel and has yeah, you get some two magical qualities. Upon command, the staff will alter its length from as short to as six feet to as long as 12 feet or any length in between. Mm. So you can extend or shorten your staff. Yeah. Um, and then it, uh, oh, it is just magically enchanted with a bonus to hit and damage. Which you won't tell me what it is. No, you'll have to work it out on your own based on, you roll it like a 15, but it actually hits something that needs to be hit by an 18, so you know it's plus 8. How do you do that, actually? I usually just have, um, people make intelligence checks after a while to see if they figure it out, and then I'll tell them, but... Uh, I, I rely on the players to realize that Sean is hitting on a 16, but Malachi's mm -hmm. hitting on a 13, but not that a 12. Sense. I think that works too. Yeah. Can I just hit you with it until we find out, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> How? 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 Right. Stop that. 
Um, and then your oh, scimitar. I gotta go dig up some old notes for that one. That's awesome. That you basically got the power pull from Dragon Ball. I uh, never watched. It's um, it's old. It's definitely you watch it and you're like, oh yeah, this is definitely a 1980 show. But there's good shit, like when he lifts some people off to the moon and just tells them to stay there and that maybe he'll let them come back if they make enough candy. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I love it. That sounds absolutely mental. Um, do, do. <laughs> Let's see. Your blade. Um. Actually, as he's looking at that, he goes, you know, I, I've actually heard of this sword before. Have you? Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. It's been around these parts for last hundred years, thousand years or so. Really? Called Harvest Moon, I believe. Uh, hold oh, on. God. He comes back and pulls out a book from his library 15 minutes later. I'm just it glad up, it's one of the older ones. Uh, opens it up and points it. There's a, a drawing of your scimitar uh, in it. Um, and he reads from the book telling you that originally Harvest Moon was gifted to the Baron of Shirebrook back in 631 BC to combat the werewolves that had taken up residence in the Hidden Valley. <laughs> it was passed from ranger to ranger to ranger to ranger for hundreds of years until it was lost deep within the Hidden Valley in 959 post-cataclysm. Okay. Uh, Harvest Moon surfaced again in 1502 when an adventuring party found it out in the tether wilds uh, one by one the members of the party died off until just their cleric was left oh, um, shit. and then that you know was lost from there that's cleric uh damn what does it do though um it is a incredibly light so lightweight that it can be used offhand for the purposes of dual wielding without penalty without penalty uh well no um as if, like, because you normally you need to use a weapon a size smaller in your offhand. Yeah. So oh, you can okay. use a scimitar in your offhand okay, so if it were a dagger or something. For standard penalty. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. It has an orange tinted mithril blade with the phases of the moon engraved on both sides, going from full to new. Mm -hmm. uh, its pommel is made of the remains of a shooting star, and its cross guard oh. is a downward crescent. Right. Um, there's a bonus to hit and damage because of the enchanted blade, but you'll have to figure that out on your own. Okay, so it's super light and it has a bonus to hit and damage? Yeah. Okay. I, I was figuring that was probably going to be the case. Yeah. So I'm just glad we got that out there. Alright. Uh, spell list nail or...? Spell list, right. So you've got the book that he's got hit for his spell list already? Are you? Yeah, but it, you said he had a few books. He does have a few books. Right, because he had protection from normal missiles, but that wasn't in that book. Right. So I figure that he's got a huge amount, so I might just request spells, and you tell me if he's got them. That sounds much better. How does that sound? So I'll I'll come back at the break. Let's just say I get six spells, right? I don't know how long that takes, and then I'll... Right. Um, so if you... Well, you get six spells to learn, but that you know those spells take days to learn. So you guys are just going to hang out here for a couple of weeks? He's making copies for me so I can learn them. Remember like I did with oh, Romulan. Oh, right. Right, right, right. Yeah. Cool. Um, so why don't we take our break? It's a little bit early considering we started so late. Uh, but we'll see you guys on the other side of our break with some more Hardcore Heroes. See you soon. Correct.